Boston, thank you all for coming out and showing up. I had a great time. Uh, Minneapolis, you are up next, April 28th through the 30th. Get your tickets now at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. I want to say thank you, as I do every week, for all your support. This show it can, listen, I want to say this. We had over a million downloads for the last three months in a row, audio only, all right? Thank you. This show is growing. It continues to grow, and it's because of you. Thank you for coming out and supporting me on the road. Tickets for all my shows are available at ryansickler.com, all right? Now, the YouTube channel, go subscribe. The numbers are climbing over there, too, but, man, it helps us if you're subscribed and uh, it's a free way to help, all right? So if you got to have more Honeydew, then there's a Patreon show called The Honeydew With You All that has the absolute wildest stories in comedy. I promise you. It's five bucks a month. If you sign up for a year, you're getting over a month free, and you're getting The Honeydew a day early ad free at no additional cost, all right? And, and you're hearing shit that I promise you you're getting nowhere else else. All right. Uh, and if you have a story that has to be heard, please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. Hopefully we get to do an episode together. All right. So thank you for your support on that too. Now that's the biz. You know what we do over here? We, what do we do? We highlight the lowlights y'all. These are the stories behind the storytellers. And, uh, today I'm very excited to have two storytellers here. One is a repeat guest and one is new to the do y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dan Mancina and Anthony Ferraro. Welcome to Yay! the Honeydew, gentlemen. All right. Honeydew. All right. Go. We're, I don't know if we're making podcast history, at least in comedy. I don't know if there's ever been two blind guys on a podcast. That. Two blind guys in two the same room. Two blind guys in the same motherfucking room. That's right. Pleasure to be here again. Man. Pleasure, Thank you. pleasure yes. for you to come back, Anthony. Pleasure to have you here. Honored to be here. Um, before we get into what we're going to get into, feel free to uh, plug anything you guys would like, please. Yeah, I would say uh, we have like a collab page of me and him. It's four bad eyes across the board. F O U R. And it's like, <laughs> it's just us messing around, doing funny videos, and super podcast. fun to watch. <laughs> and then podcast to YouTube, everything for bad eyes. Yes. All right. Anything yeah. separately for you, Anthony, or? Uh, no, just that. And then I, I'm ASF Vision across the board. Mm -hmm. All I'm right. Dan the man scene across the board. Well, it's really good to have you guys here. I was excited when you had this idea to do this. Um, so I was asking you guys outside. I know, Dan, you've been on here, and we talked mm -hmm. about you. You went blind. You lost your sight. Mm -hmm. Anthony, you said you were born. Mm -hmm. uh, so can I ask you a question? Yeah. You're born blind, and does it get worse as you get older? Or if you're born blind, is it a set level, and it just maintains through life? Does it ever get better? Does it ever get worse? It depends on the condition, I guess. So, like, some diseases, some eye conditions, they get worse over time, like in my case. And then some just stay at the level they were born at. But mine is uh, Lieber's congenital amaurosis, and it's LCA, it's called for short. And it, I was born with, like, a little bit of sight, you know, where I could see, like, people, like, the outlines of people and no detail or anything. I could see, like... I could read really, really big print, like huge. And then uh, as I got older, it just slowly kept deteriorating. And now, now it's just like light perception and like uh, sometimes like shadows in perfect daylight. Mm -hmm. Explain light perception. So like I could see um, I have a really small sphere. So like it's like tighter than like looking through two straws. And then like one eye, I can't really see. There's nothing at all. It's just like. It's basically a blur where I can just see if it's light or dark. And the other eye, I can make out, like, colors and stuff. And then, uh, like, I could see that the sky's blue. I could see that the grass is green. But I can't make out anything of it. What colors mm -hmm. do you see most prominent? What's Definitely the blue skies. Um, I'd say just lighter colors in general. Because, like, once it gets to a darker tone, like... 
red and like red and brown would look the same blue like black none of those i could tell apart mm -hmm. you know unless they're like neon and what about you dan what do you see prominently nothing i'm total blind now really yeah were you last time you were here? Uh -huh. You were all the way at that point? Yeah, I didn't like, think you were. I thought last... you could see like, um, I thought you said something about like day and night. You could see, you could see yeah, some kind of light perception. No, back like I think four, right around four years ago is when I went like total blind. So I can't tell light, anything like that. Like I used to be able to see like, like, like. You're if out you, in the parking lot if fucking doing a... goddamn <laughs> skate tricks <laughs> with a fucking cane, man. <laughs> 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 If you like, I used to be able to see like you shine a flashlight in your eye, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. But now none of that. So, but I see like weird like flashes and stuff like that. So when you're saying uh huh so and stuff is, to what he's saying, you're saying it from you remember that that yeah. is that sort of the, you had the same same yeah going through that yeah yes it must be similar but like Anthony could never even like to read to read anything he would have to blow like one single letter at a time up on like a Whole television screen. screen. Like a oh, whole wow. full on okay. television. To see I used to, to sit there because I was so determined to not be blind. Like, mm -hmm. I used to fake it and just pretend I wasn't blind any way I could. I would have the, the, the book under, like, on this tray, and it was, this, it was called a CCTV, and it was this big screen on top. And you would put the book under the tray, and it would blow it up on the screen. And I'd have, like, two letters at a time on this screen mm -hmm. reading so slow. And it was just miserable. But I was like, nah, I could see. You Can know? you read Braille, either of you? That's what I read. Uh, Anthony's mainly. really good. Yeah, yeah. I suck at it. So, do you? Okay, let me ask it this way: When you learn the alphabet, are you learning first in Braille, or are you learning by blowing up the letters on the monitor and reading A, B, C like that? How are you learning to read? I learned the visual stuff just at first because it was a better. So, like, my parents wanted me to have that reference point too, like a visual like images of this stuff for when I went blind so I knew what everything looked like so then once I hit like at the time it was like uh I went to the first grade in a school for the blind and then I just started learning braille like fully like print was out of my life mm -hmm. right now with memory of letters can you sit down and from memory draw an A, a B, a C all the way through the alphabet? Absolutely. And it's actually funny because it's like my handwriting's like a five year old from the last time I could like see. It's all capitals. <laughs> handwriting it's got all held capitals. Back. <laughs> Oh, it's all caps? It's all oh, caps. Oh, no, Why funny. is he screaming, this yeah. motherfucker? <laughs> it's all caps. Oh, uh, but you can do it, huh? Can, can you do it, it Dan? I can do it. Mm -hmm. you yeah, can do I wrote, it? yeah, all the way through. I think Dan has pretty good handwriting, I've heard. It can be all right. And what about numbers? Yeah. You can write yeah. numbers? I can. I can't write, like, cur the only thing I can do in cursive is my name. I mean, mm. fuck cursive. Nobody even does cursive yeah. anymore. It's a lost art, I swear. <laughs> but you still <laughs> sign your name? Like, yeah, you still sign my name and stuff. What about um, my mom told me you could just do like an X at the grocery store? So yep, I was like, oh, shit. Right. I'm just doing that. What about like images? Are there any images you can draw? A flower, a car? Is there anything that sticks out that you remember so vividly that you could at least make it out? For me, yeah. But the problem is like I never was able to see fully. So I, my memory of that is just what I was able to see at that time. What would it be? I have no. Nothing to compare it to otherwise, like, seeing it better. But to me, like, a car, it's a fucking car. You know, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Like, You got to uh, have you draw something. I know. I got to, like, draw it. Dude, you're, we're going to have you draw it. <laughs> well, a we'll car. Draw is it, it is well. that what you'd go for is a car? I, he said a car. So. Oh, okay. No, I'm saying what if you had to draw anything from memory right now, if there was a contest, Like a let's sunset, say. probably. A sunset. Well, Didn't you, won a, you won an award for a <laughs> yeah, I won piece a, of art, right? Oh, there was this one night. How the and, fuck do you forget? Yeah. You won an award, yeah. bro. <laughs> Listen, my good mom, thing my, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's an artist. And she like, she you know, she started an art program for the blind okay. like, when I was young in, uh, in the school for the blind. And... I'll never forget this one night we were driving home from somewhere and we I grew up at the beach so we're driving along Ocean Avenue and the moon is like huge right and it's there it has this like green hue to it because this the clouds and everything and it's like foggy and my mom was like Anthony look at that over there like take a mental note of that like take a picture of that in your brain and 
go home and draw that. And like I went home and made this pastel drawing of like the dark night sky with this like greenish moon coming through mm -hmm. and then like the clouds rolling through it just from like my vision of it. And then that and she put in a contest and ended up like winning national and like getting like I Damn. got like three hundred bucks for it. Yeah, Fuck yeah. I was like, right. oh shit. Um, how do you two know each other? We met we met uh is it a year ago, right? Yeah. It'll be a year yeah. ago in June. We had a little skate thing where we got a bunch of blind people and like other adaptive skaters together in Michigan. You told me about this, yeah. Yeah, and we all were just hanging out and then that's when we first met. And I was just kind of skating with Anthony and teaching him some stuff I knew of how to skate blind. Is there like a newbie area of that so that these people aren't fucking running over each other all the time and hitting um, each other and then like a pro level area or something? Well, or, what was cool about yeah. that, the owner of the park, it's an indoor, this huge indoor park and he I shut mean, it down. I mean, can I ask you all a question for a second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the insurance policy on yeah. something like that? <laughs> I used to get comments like, you should not let that dude skate. It's skating your own risk. It's skating your own risk, but the signs aren't in Braille. That's yeah. the problem. Didn't see the sign. Didn't see the sign, man. I didn't see that mm. shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's scary. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ger George, man. So you two just clicked, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Definitely. All right. Skated Did you know who Dan was before you became friends with him? Yeah, he's Dan. A pretty big like, deal in your world. He's like Through the big, medium. big uh, blind skate guy. You know, he's mm -hmm. like the goat. <laughs> the yeah, he is. I know. But, but no, I, Tony I, I the blind he's, skating over here. I didn't know how big he was. I didn't know Anthony very much. Okay. And like his TikTok is huge. Oh, yeah. Is that right? And now it's like YouTube's. Yeah. He just got his creator award for 100K. Hell YouTube yeah. and all that. Congrats. They sent me four they different sent four. Listen to this shit. <laughs> what? So YouTube, I got uh, like 100,000 subscribers a couple months ago. They sent me an award. I was pumped. It wasn't in Braille or anything, but I didn't really care that much. But all these people online were like, yo, they should send you a Braille one. That's kind of messed up, like billion dollar corporation, you know? And then all of a sudden I got an email saying, we're so sorry. We'll send you one in Braille. So I'm real pumped, right? This This award's coming. Get in the mail, open it on camera, like doing a live unboxing like video for it. And <laughs> <laughs> I open it, I feel the braille. It's micro braille. Like you can't make braille this small. I don't know how they did it. It was like white out print, like just on the uh, thing. And I go to read the braille. And as I read it, the braille wipes off with my finger. No. Right and, it's got, and I'm on camera. I'm like, -uh. oh, shit. And like this video ends up getting like 14 million views, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, good. I'm like, oh, man. Like demonetize it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They can't even braille it up better. the it better. Wiped it off. There's some <laughs> they, grease on they're that. They're like, we are so sorry. Like we're overnighting you a new one. <laughs> they sent a brand new one overnight. I get the big box this time. I'm pumped, dude. This box i go i'm doing i'm like oh they sent a new one like making the video and then open it the braille is perfect except there's one space in my last name so like f-e-r-r-a space r-o but i was like whatever that's sick you know like the braille is on there mm. i can read it it's perfect and then my girl is like my wife kelly she's like oh shit and i'm like what and she's like they left out the last n in your uh name in your first name and i was like anthoy no, uh, dude, Anthony. I couldn't believe. It. I was like, I'm gonna hang this thing up in my office, and I they I wouldn't have noticed either if no one like read I don't it for think me. Anybody else would either. And then they sent another <laughs> one. And it finally came. Yeah. No, the to print. Four. The print said. The print said Anthoy. So I had print oh, and print. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. I was like, wow. I'm gonna wow. hang this up, <laughs> and everyone's, and I would never know. And I'm like, the Braille's fine, dude. Oh, like, yeah. they'd be like, who's Anthoy? Oh, so now, yeah. like, that went viral too. So everyone's calling me Anthoy and shit. Oh man, I'll tell you, if it ain't bad enough, I oh, swear. Was great. They got it right, but they got it right, and I was pumped. It was All like, right, it was well, a good never on YouTube up. for getting it right. <laughs> Um, all right, so you guys meet a year ago, and now you uh, buddy up. You're going around doing shit together. All right. Yeah, I was getting sick of doing stuff solo. I was getting burnt out on it. I was like, I need to, like, I just want to partner with somebody and, like, it just be more fun, you know? Yeah, you guys seem like you, and then me and you, Anthony, you connect well. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, it all perfect. right, so you both sent some some stories. 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to just bounce back and forth <laughs> off your list. So I do want to do this because, Dan, we we touched on last time your thumb, and then we never got to it. You're right. Yeah. And fans were like, you never got to the fucking thumb. <laughs> Cut my thumb so off. So let's do your fucking thumb. One and a half times. All right. When I was, this is, I lived in uh Can I see it? Warren, oh, yeah. So my, there's like... It's like half, right? So it's right above the nail. He's a blind amputee. So I, I was going to say, man, <laughs> you would, a blind guy would cut his thumb off. <laughs> I said it. Well, I was sighted this time when I was this, when I was little. I was seven years old. I'm sorry. I always, <laughs> me and Anthony always joke because we do the adaptive skate contest and I say I'm blind and amputee too. <laughs> yeah, you should. I, I mean, are, like, is that technically an amputee? I guess, yeah. yeah. It's, half is, but, it's an um, dude. Yeah. Not, <laughs> Man, some that, motherfucking guy with one leg on crutches yeah, is yeah. running over like, bullshit! Bullshit! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't throw a football, man. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I can't throw a football. But okay. yeah. When, so, <laughs> when I was seven, I used to live uh Warren on the border of Warren East Detroit. And my mom used to run at the high school there. Okay. And in the middle of the track there was like some football stuff. So I think it's called a fumble drill. It's like two arches and on the arms of the arches, there's like rubber arms that stick out. So you like run through it, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I never play football. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I never do totally. that's what it's called. You're supposed to cover the ball and run through it. Yeah. Yes. It's like a it's like a turnstile, but there's a bunch of them on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh I was there with one two of my brothers and one of their friends. And uh we're just like climbing on it. I was seven years old. So we're just playing on this thing. And my buddy's laying across, my brother's buddy's laying across the top row of them and I'm climbing up the side. So when he was laying on the top, one of the arms was pushed down and open. So the spring didn't have a cap on it and it was like exposed, right? So my thumb went in that little spring and right at the same time he slipped down. So it just came up and like literally squished my thumb. And I didn't, I didn't even know like, I didn't feel it at first, right? He's just laying on the ground and blood drops on his chest. And he's like, looked up. He's like, dude. And then we realized that my thumb's in here. So they got to grab it, pull it open. And I pull my thumb out and it's hanging by like a little piece of skin. Oh, just like yeah. mashed. And they're like, oh, shit. I go to, I run to my first brother and he fucking freaks out. He starts screaming, Dan, cut his thumb off. Dan, cut his thumb off. Just like like a chicken with his head cut off. I'm like, all right, he's useless. So <laughs> You're I run seven. To, yeah. So I'm going to my next brother. <laughs> it's my daughter's age right it's like now. Yeah. Yeah. She would situation not have, yeah, while his thumbs no. off. My mom was probably like on the other half of the track or something like that. Go to my next brother and he's like squinting. He's like, what the fuck? He's like, oh shit. And he took me to my mom. And then I don't remember much after this. I know there was a dude in the parking lot who just was like fucking pale faced and looked and was like, do you have a car? My mom's like, yeah. And he just bounced. He was out of there. And, okay. Ah! Yeah. He's like, I'm on here. Thank God I don't have to help these and people. And then I remember driving. his an old Aerostar van. Mm. I was sitting in the front with like a, my mom had like a birthday card or something I had under my hand. It's just like dripping. And uh, drive down the street was a, uh, what is it? Like a fire station. Are you crying? Are you fucking no, screaming? I'm in shock Are you in shock? Okay. I'm in complete shock. I don't I don't remember feeling any pain at all when I think back. So I go knock on the door and they come out and they're like, oh shit. And I just remember I'm wrapping it with gauze and it was like a beehive on my hand. It's a giant ball of gauze. And they put me in an ambulance. And then what else do I remember? Being in the ambulance is coming like in and out of consciousness. And I guess like I guess I was like in really bad shock where I was like passing out and losing all this blood where like I almost died and shit like that. And then they took me to the hospital and I don't remember much after that, just being laid up in the hospital. And I know I missed the rest of the school year, did school from home. The only time I got straight A's, I got straight A's. I remember that. And then all kinds of like toys, Aladdin on VHS and shit like that. <laughs> That's what sticks out. Yeah, man. that You're little dumb crap. Aladdin on VHS. And then they they tried Let to me sew see it. That thumb. They Let tried to it. sew it back on. So is that part nail right there? No, what is that's that? just where the bone I'm would be. That <laughs> that's like where the bone yeah. would be. That's a what? That's like where the bone would be. Oh, I a guess. knuckle right there. So it's kind of okay. like this weird. <laughs> it's not really a is, scab. Is it I don't know what it is. up now? Like, can you use it as a weapon? Can you? Yeah. Uh, can you jab it's really somebody? sensitive because last well, time I was out here, he was skating and he got like he fell. And next time I saw him, he had a band aid on his arm. 
And he's like, I hate when I hurt my um, dude. It's so <laughs> annoying. Um, because half a thumb. Because <laughs> I go to fall and I go to put my thumb down and it just gouges the top. What's of it the thing you miss most with that little piece of thumb? That what 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 do you what oh, annoys not, you the most? Nothing really. I don't nothing. remember. You don't yeah. need that. You don't. I, yeah, you really I can don't do, need that. I can do everything because yeah. it was right above that joint. If it would have right. been below that joint, then we had to take the whole thing off. Oh, is that right? And I would have looked real goofy. But Jeez. a lot of people don't notice it until like I'm actually doing something right up to them. Yeah. You know? Um. Okay, Anthony. We have uh, smashing my penis <laughs> over here. Let's <laughs> let's hear about the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <but> I, <laughs> I was four years old oh, <laughs> and i'll never forget this we had a bathroom like in the living room right so everyone's chilling in the living room we're having people over at my parents house and i go to the bathroom it's one of those times where you have to like you know you're short so you're really little and i would like rest my dick on the toilet seat on like the the rim? The rim. That's what I was like. It's nasty. Right? Oh, it's nasty, right? Nasty. I Somebody know. Somebody need to tell I you did. that. I didn't know any better. Listen. It's and then, lazy, too. Yeah, huh? lazy. <laughs> I was so little. Lazy, I didn't right? know to step up. No step up. Yo, I got a squatty potty. <laughs> yeah. my Listen. <laughs> I'll never leave home without those now. Squatty potty. <laughs> the best. No, they need to make a travel one. They do have they one. Do. He has it's one. called a porta squatty. <laughs> it folds up. It comes up. in a bag and it folds up. Yep. Hell yeah. I'm going to get but that for my trip. It's nice. Uh, so my parents just got this nice new, like, one of those heavy, like, ceramic toilet seats. They just bought it. And it, it had a the lady that sold it to them. They bought it brand new from the store. And it had a crack in it. No one knew. And it had both seats up while I'm peeing. And all of a sudden... Both seats just smashed down on my dick. And <laughs> I never it hurts I, my dick right now. I, I started screaming so loud, like bloody murder. I was so little and run out of the door. There's literally blood squirting out of the like top of my dick, and I'm screaming. Everyone's like freaking out. Like, in what the, the hell room. is happening? The in the room. <laughs> we got we got here. <laughs> and the next thing I know is like waking up in the hospital and like just taking that gross medicine that tastes like bubble gum, like the liquid shit. And mm. I had to do that for like a couple of weeks. And then I did, I remember I could barely pee without it. I couldn't pee without uh. it hurting at all. It burnt so bad because it got a separate hole. Like it, it made a second it, hole. It, it like it pierced it. It pierced Punctured it. Yeah. A new hole. And then it, that had to heal. But every time I pee, it would like, it oh. would burn so bad. I remember sitting would it in the- shoot out of that hole like I a, don't remember. <laughs> like a porpoise's like porpoise blow hole. Now I pee crooked. Like nah, a little or, crooked. Nah. Just the tiniest <laughs> bit. Like not even a lot at all where you notice. But yeah, like, your wreath is yeah, bent at the tip. This shit's fucking- <laughs> and then, uh, It's like when I bite on straws and floss with them and oh, squeeze man, them down a little bit. It was so bad. Just I remember just dicks, having dude. to piss in the bathtub. Did it disfigure your way. dick or anything? No, thank God. It just makes you piss a little to the left or right. Yeah, just piss a little left. <laughs> and, then, and then it was like we had this huge lawsuit with the company for real yeah dude it was bad because they sold us a broken toilet seat and it smashed my dick and what Ooh. so did you win we won would you win uh i think it was like like some it wasn't even that much money but i remember free toilet seats for life yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. No, and i remember like i remember Lightweight. i was like at the time, after all this was like getting said and done, I was like probably seven once the law said shit takes forever or whatever. And sitting in the courtroom, I'll never forget, the judge says to my dad, like, you know, once he's 18, I can't tell him what to, like, he could do whatever he wants with this uh, money. Like, if he wants to buy a car, he could buy a car. And I remember sitting there like, Don't oh, think he's going to be able to draw I could, one. I, I could buy a car. And then my dad goes, uh, with all due respect, Your Honor, I don't think my kid's buying a car. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> Ended up buying my wife's engagement ring. He saved it. I like saved it my whole life. I was like, I'm either years. buying a your house. Your dick money? Yeah, I my dick money. Dude, that's what I called it, too. I got my dick really? money. And I see, I was like, I'm You're either buying an engagement ring with this or buying a down payment on a house. And I got the engagement ring. It's his dick got his wife my in more than one way. Yeah, yeah, your dick, dick yeah. money bought your fucking future, bro. How about that? <laughs> no, I just remember saving it. I was like, can't spend it. That? Can't spend it. Your fucking mm. your your hurt dick just paid for forever. <laughs> How, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, Anthony. Dude, I had a I had a kidney stone one time. <laughs> oh, I have no. too, man. I, I'm with you on that. And that's my biggest to, fear. Oh, they pulver. They, had, they put a stint in me. Oh no, God forbid. And every time I peed, it would be like someone twisted my fucking kidney. I, and then I go through like they pulverized it. 
do all this stuff and to take the stint out i'm like wide awake just like in a regular like hospital or not hospital like an office lays me down on this table like a barber chair lean back and he goes with this scope and he goes right through my dick hole like mm -hmm. right in front of me and i'm just sitting there like dude what is happening didn't hurt that much but it was just like the most awkward thing. is that a capital what's that called it out. a capillator is that what they put in your pee hole after you get like surgery or something oh a catheter a catheter, catheter. Yeah. yeah that dude i'll never i got hemorrhoid surgery <laughs> 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 you did what the hell happened I, to you dude, back I, there i threw so, so i do judo for the like train for the paralympics and shit. yeah tell us about that as well please it, it's just other blind people uh from all around the world fighting like uh in judo and you go around the uh world competing in different like competitions to get points to make it to the paralympics where are you ranked uh i was ranked top 20 all right and then in the world and then I like was so close to making it to 2021 in Tokyo and then I tore my groin like right before it happened. Damn. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sucked. But you think you can get a gold? No. No. I, I'm, bronze, you think you can medal? I think I can medal this time. This well, time what? Silver or bronze? I'm gonna get gold this time. All right. Let's see. Then you do think you can. Yeah. No How do you wear your hair when you judo? Mm -hmm. I get it braided tight like yeah. back. All right. But I threw someone in judo, like in Germany, I'll never forget it. Like deadlifted this guy off the ground and I threw my back out. And then I was having all this problem, like constipation and shit, like because it was the time difference and traveling. And then for months, I ignored it. Like just, I didn't even know what hemorrhoids were. And then one day it got so bad where my, I just thought like I was wiping too aggressive or something. <laughs> like my ass was just itchy. <laughs> and uh, one day it got so bad where I couldn't like walk. And I was like, this is really bad. I went to all these different doctors who just kept telling me I had hemorrhoids. So gave me the cream. And then finally I went to a specialist <laughs> and he's cream. like, did like a whole exam, like the examination, everything, got my first digital. And I was like, oh! <laughs> worst thing ever. And uh, the guy is like, I don't know how you're walking. You have like a fissure and like multiple hemorrhoids and like immediately put me into surgery. And then, uh, where was I going? Oh, right when I got out of Up surgery. Yeah, no, right when, I, <laughs> right when I got out of surgery. I'll never forget this. I, no one said anything about this, but I was like so scared they were going to put something in my pee hole. And I'm like so delusional from the fentanyl and everything that whatever they give you for the anesthesia. I wake up out of surgery where they're rolling you out and you're still in and out. And I'm like, they're like, you're out. Like everything's good. And I'm like, do not put a catheter in me. Like I woke up like real quick and like said that to her. He and didn't like, want the chill. catheter. Like no one's going to do that. Don't touch my dick. So I'm traumatized scared. from when I smashed. I, I have penis trauma. When you go in with the catheter, make sure you go in the right hole, dude. Make sure you go in the front one. For most of us, learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers. I know I took Spanish from 8th through 11th grade, and I've said it before, I wasn't even good with English. Uh, but now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Y'all know I've been taking my Espanol, and it's going muy bueno. All right, and the thing I really like about it is you get to speak you get to hear it from a male and a female. You get to hear the accents, the inflections. Then you have to speak back and say it properly so that you can pass on. And they do these little bite-sized chunks where you're constantly, you know, repeating and redoing things. That's for me, is the best way to learn. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to babbel.com. Use my promo code HONEYDO. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com code HONEYDO. Babbel, language for life. Mellower vibes are a drop or a toke away with dad grass. They'll take you back to a time when music was on vinyl, Delta was an airline, and hipsters were a style of jeans. Sit back, light up, and chill out the old-fashioned way. Dad grass is legal 
organic smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-roll joints are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. Want to toke without the smoke? Daggrass also has a CBD tincture made with the same high-quality hemp. It's easy to dose, and the effects come on smooth. Chill out without getting stoned. It's like having a glass of wine, not the whole bottle. All Daggrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Daggrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Daggrass is offering my listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash honeydew. Go to dadgrass.com slash honeydew for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash honeydew. Now, let's get back to the do. Um, okay, Dan, I want to hear. I'm looking at your list over here. I want to hear this uh, LAX story, this restroom mm. in LAX. This is when I had a little, this is when I had a, like some site. So I wasn't using a cane and I'm leaving LAX. Can I ask you just for a moment? And maybe you can answer this too, Anthony. When were you not using a cane at that point because you were fighting it and just were like, I can do this? Was it pride? Was it. For me, it was never pride. I had, I just had like, like I had pretty, like really good vision. Yeah. You know, like my central vision was still good. Like I used to work at a deli and slice meat. You know what I mean? One of those like fucking slicers and shit. Yeah. As a, like a legally blind person. Cause like central vision is still good, but my peripheral is all gone. So like I could always navigate at that point. I can navigate fine. Right. He's killer on them center cuts, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like, just, <laughs> legally blind I shave it. I do whatever you need. I got you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's the problem with that? <laughs> but, um, okay, yeah. So, yeah, it's so, like, but I had trouble reading like signs and stuff I couldn't see. I couldn't see any signs in the airport, but I had it like mapped out pretty good because I'd been there a million times. I'm going to the bathroom. And at this point, like the men's and the ladies were right next to you. It's like right where you can go into the Delta Lounge right there. You see mm-hmm. two bathrooms exactly side by side. About, yeah. And I go and I look at the sign, and in my head, I saw the men's logo. So I go in there and I go in the stall and I'm taking a shit and I'm sitting there and then I hear like ladies' voices. I'm like, oh shit. And I start thinking back like, yeah, I didn't see any stall or any uh, urinals Urinals. in here. Like, oh my God, I'm in the fucking woman's bathroom right now. So I'm trying... And no cane. You could at least no put that cane or underneath or something. Exactly. Ah. And this is this is pre fucking anyone could use the bathroom. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. This is pre identification. I was like, shit, how am I gonna go? I just fucking finished. I opened the door and I beeline it straight to the exit. And there's two ladies looking, they're both just staring at the mirror, like doing their makeup, didn't even look at me or glance, walked right past them and left and went to the men's and washed my fucking hands. Dude. Dude. But that feeling of like I was like, damn, I fucked oh up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, I got Have you ever fucked up like that in any I other situation? Reading, oh, yeah. This is before you're asking me, not yet. Yeah. Right? yeah. I'll do the river story. <laughs> the what? The river story is out okay. of too. This is when I wasn't using a cane, too. And while I'm up north Michigan, and this is like end of April, <laughs> so snow has just thawed, and we're staying on this like nice campsite right next to this river. And on the river has a, a big bank that's about like above head. So it's got to be like seven, eight feet tall. And we're sitting by the fire, like getting just like hammered. All you do is drink up there. So I'm like fucking three sheets to the wind. I leave the fire. I gotta go piss. Start walking in the woods, walking, walking, right step, left step. And then fucking nothing drops straight to the river. And in like it? in the fucking river. It, can you swim? Yeah, I can okay. swim. But it was like. I fucking I barely remember like how I how I fell. I just remember no earth underneath me <laughs> and then popping out of the water. <laughs> oh, oh, scary shit. Shit, and then by that all the homies oh, man, scary <laughs> shit, all my dude. friends heard it. So they come running over and like I look up, there's like headlamps just staring down at me. Got to reach Holy up and they pulled fuck, me out. Dude, Jesus. But that Christ. was the first time where I was I was actually really pissed after that because I was like, dude. You can really like get hurt if you're not paying attention yeah. and not having a cane, and it really fucked with me mentally of like having to start using a fucking cane and like really think about how you're walking and navigating and stuff like that. Because yeah, dude, you know, hit your head and fucking float away, gone or something. Gone, yeah. yeah. For cold real. water is like freezing yeah. water, yeah. But 
Yeah. Holy shit. Mm. Just boom into a river. <laughs> he just got baptized, bro. Baptized, dude. I had one where yeah, I thought about I was you? falling in the Mississippi River. <laughs> 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 That's a bigger That's river. A That's bigger, a bigger river I'll than my river. Across Bro, it. It was I swam to Mississippi we were, in, 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 in uh, Minnesota. Yeah. I was so scared. Like, I'd never been more pleased. Like, I was so happy to hit the ground. I was like, oh, thank God. But I was riding a scooter in New Orleans, like, on this path with my, my girl was right behind me. And she, riding she was a like, scooter. Yeah, Electric she, one? No, little no, bird like, one? Uh, okay. Just a freaking uh, razor, razor scooter. Yeah. And like, she's got, she's filming behind me. And I'm just like whipping down this path. <laughs> and I know that the river is like a 30 foot drop off on my right. But I don't know anything else between that. And next thing I know, I'm I'm riding, riding, and all of a sudden I hear, oh shit. And like, I'm going over the front handlebars of the scooter. And I'm going through the air, and in air, I think I'm falling into the Mississippi <laughs> oh, River. Oh, no. And you the thought process, through, <laughs> yeah. the thought process through my head. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm fucked. I'm not going to be able to make it out because it's like a 30-foot like to get up. And it's this current is so strong, and this is disgusting right here. Like... I was, and then I hit the ground and I was just you, the biggest smile on my face, like in the video. <laughs> it was thought bad. you I were going to get truly dying. baptized in the muddy water. What, yeah. let me ask you this. What's the most frustrating thing about not having vision? And it's just like some of the little things, like. What annoys you? What's a, what's a daily, like, fuck that shit. Yeah. Like uh, sometimes when you, uh, if you're looking for something and you know it's like in this general area and you've looked like all around this area feeling like hands and knees and then someone comes in with sight and they're like, oh, it's right here. And you were just like an inch away from finding yeah. it. You're spending five minutes you, of your life. Uh, where, lot, huh? Yeah. And all it's the so time. these little things, just, they, they build up. up so much time in your day. And then me, I'm like so over it sometimes where I'm just like trying to run through it, everything. So I'm like, you know, fuck it. I'm just like running through my house and shit. And then something's moved up. Or I'll like misjudge where something was like from my memory and just nail my head or my shin. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is such bullshit, you know? Like I'll freak out sometimes where I'm like, I could ride a skateboard. I could like, you know, do judo, I like grappling. I could do all these things and like can't fucking see a damn wall in front of my face, you know? And that shit really frustrates me. Speaking of which, watch your heads on the way down the stairs here at the studio. There's a metal bar across the top. <laughs> you, know, you will crack that motherfucker if you stand up too straight. <laughs> Um, all right, let me ask you this. Is there a silver lining? It would you, what would you say is if you had to find a positive about it, what would you say is is something that's good about it? I think And maybe I'm asking it the wrong way. No, no, I apologize no, if that's I am, great. but do you know what I'm it's saying? It's kind of a double edged sword for me because at at some points people are overly helpful for you, like trying to help mm -hmm. you with every little thing. But then at the same time it's like people really are nice and you realize like there's a lot of good people who like are generally they're just looking out for you you know what i mean walking down the street you have random people come up to you like hey man you need help or anything like that and like i think that's super positive because people are like not everybody's mean you know what i mean right not everybody's like fucking trying to get you you know what i mean not mm -hmm. coming out for you which seems like that's how the world's painted more and more lately, so. That and not waiting in airport lines. Not waiting in the, you know, just get yeah. the skip line. <laughs> for me, like, too, when, because I was born blind, so, like, I was never really able to see people and, like, what everyone looked like, and I think that really helped me in terms of not judging people off a of first glance, and, like, I actually had to get to know someone for their personality and judge them off that, and that, like, helped me yeah. really mm -hmm. get to connect with people a lot more growing up. I like that. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, uh, without sight, not being able to see people within the blind community, is there racism? <laughs> is there? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, there's got to be. Is it, yeah. I'm there's, sure. There's definitely amongst, you know, it's like in any community. Okay. So, it, yeah, I haven't witnessed you it haven't? firsthand. I mean, I don't, we don't know that many There's some really people, proud but. blind people that are like anti-sighted people. Mm -hmm. If that's what you mean too, or, no, but no, me. the the blind people that can't see at all, and then the people that can see a little. I oh okay, There's so like that's the division. next thing I want to ask yeah. you. Among There's the blind division. people, then, if not racism, what is the where is the the disconnect? Yeah, where are the there's heads some butt? people who are super proud to be blind, yeah, and like, like they don't want braille on money, they don't want anything changed in this world because they're they're confident 
in, they in their abilities adapt. and we don't need any assistance. Okay. And then there's just other people who are just like, yeah, put fucking braille on money. Yeah, like, like that'd be chill. Like that we need like more equality. Yeah, how the fuck you do know you know I mean? if you're holding a five or a yeah. 10 or a 20? How you do don't. you? There's little scanners. Yes. Uh, you can, there's an app on the phone. You can scan, it'll tell you. But and What about you f- before that? Um, You can get a free uh, reader from the government they really? came out with. Yeah, you just apply and they send it to you and you just like put the corner of the bill in it and it'll tell you what currency it is. I see. But and then, then you just fold it a certain way. You know, 20 is like a hot dog. Five's like this, five, whatever uh, I do. So you can have it organized. Oh, I see. But now I just use the app on the phone if I ever need to know. Okay. You just scan it. It tells you in like real time what it is. All right. So now how dependent are you guys on technology these days? Oh, super. Yeah. The phone. Yeah, I used right? to be Number super one anti- tool. Especially once touch like touch screens. Yeah, did you have out. a flip phone? As a yeah, I had a flip phone change. for the longest time. It wouldn't change. Like the the. Listen, envy. there's a lot of people with sight to do that do shit that, yeah, too. Yeah, by yeah. the way, yeah, oh, yeah. I had like mem. I I would have the whole phone memorized, like every menu, how many clicks down in oh, that menu yeah. to get to the next one. Like mm-hmm. even so my change content, like is really everything. what was it was change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then learning that whole new thing. But once you do, it's like all right, this fly. Yeah, you're yeah. flying, and yeah. it's the. Most of the time, technology is there to help, you know. So. It's huge getting rides, Uber, and all that stuff. Yeah, all especially done on the phone. Uber that opened like a whole new world. Changed. Um, tell me some time that some you knew you caught someone trying to rip you off. Go first, uh, Dan. Oh, someone trying to rip me off. I don't think I've scam had your it. con you none of that. You haven't had that. Not that I know of. Yeah. Not How about I, you, I Anthony? Recognize. I was at a glass shop, uh, like a smoke shop thing. And I was looking at like something. And I was asking the guy the price, and he was like, this was actually in L.A., like, last month. And I was asking the guy <clears throat> the price, and he's like, oh, it's 180 And I was like, oh, that's, like, the best you can do? And I was like, you know, I looked like I was about to turn around. And I had my cane and everything. I'm in there by myself. And uh, the guy's like, you know what? I could do 140 plus tax for you, man. For Like, for you, I could do that. And I'm like, oh, sick. Like, the guy's kind of hooking it up, you know? So I'm like... All right, whatever. And I got it. Go out to the car. And I'm like, yeah, he hooked it up. Like, he said, like, he brought it down to 140. My wife looks at it. She's like, the sticker price is 140. <laughs> I thought she was going to say yeah. 799. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I, it was so, yeah, that fucked me shit. up so yeah. bad because Anthony was pissed. I was, dude, I called him crying. Like, I was ra- like so mad. And I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, how many fucking times has this happened to me in my life that I don't even know about? Right. Like, mm-hmm. I just went in there trying to be, like, independent. This fucking guy is scamming me and, like, you know. You can you, say fucking on this I know, show. I know. I, but, like, I was just so pissed. I was like, I can't believe it. And it made me, like, for, like, 10 minutes lose all hope in humanity. Like, I just gave up for a minute, you know? And I was like, get over yourself. So then like, what, what brings it back for you then? He went back in, though, and fucking told the dude. Did you? Oh, yeah. Good for you. I yeah. was like, yo, it's real messed up. You're lying to blind people, like, acting like you're hooking them up and not doing, like, and doing that. And he's, he had nothing to say. He didn't say just, anything. That's you take that cane, you knock all that glass <laughs> off the shelf. I was thinking about it. I was <laughs> Stop different. bumping <laughs> shit out of the way. You know that rage in your mind? You could see yourself doing something, yeah, but you're like, yeah, no, yeah, don't yeah. do yeah. that. Like, you'd love to. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, but um, it's right. just a matter of like you got to keep going. Like you can't give yeah, up though. Let, it's like you can't, can't just let that hold sit you back. in your house. How, how old are you, sorry. Anthony? Twenty seven. Uh, about yeah, twenty seven. What about you, Dan? Thirty four. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Anthony, tell me about your mom's brain injury. Ooh yeah. Um, so I was living in California at the time, but I was home for like Christmas and all that, and my brother had just passed away. From uh, what what happened to your brother? He was 27 and he he died in his sleep. And Jeez. Like, yeah, it was like one night of like partying went wrong, but like not even like serious partying or anything like that. It was like some shit like in the shit, you know, like stuff was messed with or something. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. But uh, that happened. And then I was home for Christmas and I'm at my buddy's house like after New Year's and stuff. About to go out to the bar. And I was going to go to the bar with all my buddies and not come home for a while. Something was like, you got to get home, like in me. I was, it was so strong and I've never felt this before in my entire life, but it was like, get the fuck home now. And I was like, what is going on? You know? And it was so strong that I looked at my one friend and I was like, dude, you got to give me a ride home right now. So 
my buddy only lives like five minutes from my parents' house. And we get in the car, start driving to my parents' house, and all of a sudden we get pulled over by a cop. Nah. -uh. Yeah. A cop pulls us over, calls back up. Two cops are there, two cop cars for two, just two. We're like 20 years old at this point. And sitting there, the cops like asked us all these questions, you know, do you have anything in the car? Ended up making us get out of the car, searching us and all this stuff. We had nothing like nothing. We weren't lying about anything. Get to my house, go downstairs. Like we have a jam room in the basement where we play music and stuff. And we go downstairs and at the bottom of the stairs, I run into a body and my mom, I, I like hear like this breathing and my buddy's like, oh my God, oh my God. And I reached down and it's my mom like unconscious in a pool of blood. Jesus. I, Did you know it was your mom right away? Yeah. Is that the only person home? Yeah. He, cause he said your mom. Oh. And I like picked, picked her up. I went on autopilot. Like if I was thinking straight, I would have freaked out. I literally picked her up, ran upstairs like in a like cradle, you know, like cradling her and then put her on the chair, started like dabbing her face with a towel because she hit her head and split it open when she fell down the stairs. And my buddy's like doing everything I ask, like get me all the stuff. And then are you just feeling blood and everything? Like I have that? blood on my face, like Jesus. all over me. It was so it was really scary. Like I, if I was thinking about what was going on, I literally would have lost it. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to control myself. And I call the ambulance. I tell them what's going on. They come. And wh while I'm waiting for the ambulance, all of a sudden my mom, I hear like, you know, she's making this sound where she's like, <sighs> like barely breathing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, at this point, I'm almost yelling at her. I'm like, come on, mom. Like, why? Like, why did this happen? Like, why? Like, so confused. And then all of a sudden I hear her stop breathing. And I like freaked out and then like gave her this little shake and hear like, <gasps> like breath go back into her. And then my buddy's there the whole time. And then the ambulance gets there and she gets in the ambulance and I'm still at my house with my buddy. And all of a sudden like reality hits me and I just start like throwing up and like losing my shit. And then my like my buddy's dad had to come over. He's an EMT to like clean up the pool of blood in my basement. And then my mom was in a coma for like two months like i couldn't Jeez. even go to the hospital for the first like couple week or like week or so because i was so terrified and mm -hmm. when i got there i like my mom was hooked up to all these machines and mm -hmm. she was like her hands were super swollen and i remember just like my knees buckled and i fainted like you i was did? yeah i was so it, shook you walk in the in the room and all you hear are just like machines machines and, and my mom's on this machine and i can't i can't see what's going on either so i'm like making all these things up in my mind and it's like mm -hmm. and then like <laughs> the doctor told us she, like doctor sat me down and said it would take her like years and years before she'd be able to do anything again like you know whatever and Within like a couple, like, so like a month later, my mom's like, she's awake and stuff. She can't talk because like her whole, like all this, like all the throw and everything for some reason, the way she was hit and like how everything happened and she was in the coma, she couldn't talk. And she was just trying to rip the things off her and they had to put those like, Restrain. those like glove things yeah, on her hands yeah. and shit. And like, I was like, oh man. And it was just like. It was a lot. And then, like, by the time she was coming to, like, starting to talk and stuff, and then in the rehab and stuff, my mom was like, that's why I knew she was coming back. My mom is like, they're, like, feeding her food, and she's like, is this organic? <laughs> You're like, there she is. And then my uncle would be, like, visiting. Like, we're all there, and she, my br mom's brother, she's one of 13 kids. So, like, they're all there, you know, and, like, uh, my, my uncle's there. She goes, Leo. Let's let's go get everyone Chinese food real quick, and she would like try anything she could do to like yeah. get everyone to get her out of there. And she would mm -hmm. like would bribe the nurses. She'd be like, "I give you 150 bucks to drive me home right now." <laughs> <laughs> and then she just like made them like it was literally a miracle the recovery she made. And how long was she in the coma for? I want to say a month and a half. Man, you Didn't, ever talk to her about it? Like anything so she yeah, remembers? Or this is a crazy part. Yeah, this is intense. This is really intense. When my mom was in the coma. She said that she was like on this cliff, like on the side of it, like climbing it. And she just kept climbing up and climbing up and wanted to get to the top so bad. And multiple times she would 
feel someone grab her from the back and like pull her away from the top and like pull her back down. And it was my brother saying, he literally, she heard his voice and he'd be like, mom, it's not your time. You got to stay. And literally it happened multiple times. And she said one time she got her hand to the top and like, could like feel this amazing thing she was about to get to and then pulled back and then finally like woke up. Wow. And it was your brother's voice specifically. Yeah. Huh? yeah. How's mm. he feel about that? My, no, the, it was the a brother, brother that passed, passed away. away. Oh, yeah. whoa. He From was the already other gone. Side. Yeah, she no. was like, it's no not. Way. Yeah, like, don't. It's not your time. Get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, it's like, it gives me goosebumps talking about it. Holy shit. <laughs> it's wild. Oh, so he, I thought of it the other way when you first told me that story. She was like climbing to like, to the pearly to gates. X, yeah, to like That's Nirvana. To and your brother was pulling her back Same to now. stay. Happy, yeah. Wow. Oh, damn. That is nuts. That and my is mom's deep. here still. And like, mm -hmm. they said, like, you know, if I missed it like 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, she could have died. Mm -hmm. And those cops the fucking cops stopped. Could have stopped, yeah. like, stopped all of that, you know? That's a great story. Um, <laughs> tell me what's mental hospital, Anthony? What is that? It was when I was 18 years old. And I was like, I'd like, so I got a bad concussion in college. Um, this was a separate concussion, just wrestling. I got like slammed on my head and then in sophomore year of college. And then I was like, well, I'm not here wrestling. And that's kind of what I came here for. And then started being what like college, uh, TCN, the college in New Jersey and used to be trend state. And then, uh, I was stopped going to school after my, like, one semester like my grades were good and everything i just like didn't know what i wanted to do and i was so lost and confused you know that point in your life it's like wow everyone is mm -hmm. but uh i just like was lashing out I was so pissed at everything and like you know angry at like i get angry at my parents for nothing and like just so like this angry kid like i don't know what was wrong with me and then i finally like lashed out so much i was just like i think i did it as like Almost like thinking I was getting at my parents in a way, but like really it was just fucking me up. Like I was like, I'm just gonna go to the mental hospital, you know? One of those things. Like check break yourself down. in. <laughs> check myself you in. You checked yourself checked in. Checked myself in. How old are you? I was 18. Okay, so you can do that. Yeah. Okay. And I checked myself in I think I'm thinking crazy. like, oh, I'm just gonna chill here for a couple of days. Everything's gonna blow over, you know? Like fucking they start pumping you with all these drugs and shit and like giving you like all these medications. So hold up. Wait, let's 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 not yeah. jump over so, enrollment and everything else here. You oh, you checked yourself in and what do they say to you when so you get I'm, there? So, I they was mad. Willfully at that point. take you right away. So they put me in the the uh like room where they start questioning you, right? Mm -hmm. And it was going on for like hours. How many people were talking to you? I think it was like three different people. Really? And it's yeah. going for hours? Yeah, like this was going on for a long time. And they're asking me all these things. And I'm just like, no, I just I just want to be here, like type of thing. Like this angry ass. Do you remember kid. any questions? Were you like answering honestly? Were you trying no, to get in? I think I was just trying to get in. And I was just like, I, I need to be here. Like I don't I I don't feel safe for myself because I'm losing my shit right now type of thing. Mm. Like and and my parents were trying everything they could do to like not let this happen. Are they showing you, know? you spot charts? And you're like I can't see that. I don't know. It's like <laughs> all this see. shit and I remember finally like getting checked in, right? And like going up there and it was like almost this feeling of like what the fuck did I just do? Is like reality Did setting. they say you could leave? You know when, That's what I want to know, yeah. too. You know Are you now you, like a ward of the state and you can't fucking leave? Yeah. So I'm locked in there for like... For real? It, 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 they have to examine you. They have to um, just like... You have to be cleared to leave. Yeah, cleared that. to leave. And I was like, okay. And <laughs> I, I remember my stipulation. I was like, I'm not fucking going in there unless I can bring my guitar, though. And I made them let me bring my guitar, like an acoustic guitar that mm -hmm. they had locked in the closet. And like I had to ask to be able to play. And would they let you sometimes? I'll never forget. So it was like, dude, in there was such a, it was like, you're, I feel like you're a zombie and around a bunch of zombies. Cause you're in this room, there's no fresh air. It's like you have separate bedrooms off to the side. And it's just like a living room 
type area where everyone hangs out. There's like little games or something they might let you play. And then you get like an hour of TV time or something. And then you go to all these like meetings to like talk about it, like therapy, mm -hmm. which therapy was good because that helped me talk shit out. But then finally I'm like, I got to get the fuck out of here. You know, it was like two days later. <laughs> days I can't, i'm Dude, stuck i was i had doctors coming and like talking to me and i was like what did i do man and then finally um i'll never forget i had it was like everyone's like real down in there you know it's like this vibe dude it's like they make it that way almost it's like supposed to be and like nothing's happy. calm i'm trying to keep everybody yeah, just calm and very sedated. stoic you know and uh, uneventful yeah uneventful. and i started playing my guitar one day i had the person that wouldn't even talk to you like shit face, like not like shit angry grin in the corner, you know, like mad at the world. I had everybody dancing and like singing in the mental <laughs> hospital. <dude. laughs> I, had, I had the nurses. I had the nurses dancing. Dude, it got to the point where I was like, the nurses were almost like, why are you here? Because like the nurse, one nurse was from Jamaica. She would do my hair every morning. Like we would just <laughs> sit and talk about life. And like, and at one point I it started losing, you know, I was like, I really got to get out of here. And then finally, like... How many months are you in at this point now? No, it's just three days. Oh, days. Okay. Yeah, three days. And then finally it's over and I get out and like, I have to go to outpatient, you know, where you go to like just therapy groups or whatever, like once a week or twice a week. And then I started like, I took the, the medication, like an antidepressant and it started like, it started like really messing with me, I think. Like I started getting these like electric shocks through my body and all this stuff. And then they started giving me different ones to try. And then one day I passed out in the shower. I'll never forget it. And I never pass out. I was just taking a shower. And next thing you know, I'm waking up on the ground. And it freaked me the fuck out. Like I was so terrified. And I went to the doctor and I was like, this happened. And he's like, oh, you have panic disorder. Let me give you another pill for this. Yeah, right. And I remember standing up and being like, is that what you do? Like, I was so, I, I, like, I was like, this is so bad, man. I had a man. moment You're of clarity. Yeah, I, I, I fired a doctor, real, too, before I, for that shit. I literally yeah. had a yeah. moment of clarity. I, like, went off on him saying yeah. all this stuff, but in a very calm manner. Like, very um, respect, not respectful, actually, but, like, very, not, Diplomat. like, yelling, not raising my voice. Professional. Yeah, professional, oh, professional, yeah. Exactly. And uh, I told him off, and he was like, get the fuck out of my office. He mm. said that? Yeah. Because I was like, and you're doing all that just so you can drive that BMW outside. That was my final statement. Yeah. <laughs> I said, like, get the fuck out of my office. And uh, that day, I like, I don't recommend this, but like, I cold turkey from everything. And like, I, you know, through holistic ways and stuff, got off that stuff. And like, thankfully, through that journey, I learned so much about myself and like, you know, really like, therapy helps and talking to people Hell helps yeah. and shit mm -hmm. like that's all i needed to do i was like denying therapy for so long that i just needed to like talk my shit out of like dude i grew up never had sight like real sight so like i was angry about this shit you know and like mm -hmm. not being a normal kid like growing up and just wanting to be normal so bad and you know finding all that out through that shit it really it was a shitty way to get there but i got there you know good for you man yeah yeah i couldn't imagine being it was born blind having it yeah having just that division between you and just your everyone I, like as a kid in school you know it's such a big part of who you are and who you become and then feeling like divided from everybody would be like i was the blind a kid. shitty way to grow up yeah. when you're among your students and peers at a, the school for the blind and you're not the blind kid what is life like then so that was pretty chill but the thing is i was always going back home like so i went to school in philly is it, i'm sorry to interrupt but is that a place you can live no oh okay no, so you so commute you yeah do, so okay. i commute right. every day from philadelphia from new jersey to philadelphia and back so it was like a two-hour commute i go to it's school ball all day. buster fucking place to another ball buster yeah. place <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Which, isn't that the one you had to fight to yeah there was a whole court litigation case to, get, to like, get him uh, into the school to get well to get me transportation to the school because the gotcha. state didn't want to provide that so me and my mom lived in an apartment in philly I'm the youngest of five, and like she literally went to t got this apartment in Philly. We stayed there for during the week so I can go to school, and then went back home on the weekends for like two years mm -hmm. while that went on. And then, uh, where was I going with this? Where was uh, being in school with other blind oh, kids. Oh, yeah. It's just so when you're 
when you go, once I made that transfer too, from like, so seventh grade, I went from the blind school to the regular school, like public school in my town in New Jersey. So I like knew some people, but I was also the only blind person that that school's really ever seen. Mm. And I would like put my braille books on my lap under the desk to like act like, you know, like I'm not reading braille. Like this shit's, I'm not blind. It. I would get handouts and I'd be scribbling on the handouts with a pen, like <laughs> acting like I'm filling shit out, like just so I could look normal. Like teacher I would come, go teacher so would come by and just rotate that that it for you. Yeah. It's upside insane. down for you. <laughs> yeah, one time, dude, one time they were like, it's upside down. I was like, oh no. I was just, that anxiety as a kid, just, it's like crippling. Mm. And then one time I went to a dance. Finally, I'm in seventh grade. I'm in the public school in my town. Like I could go to the dance. All the girls are there. Like, you know, it's all, everyone goes. It's this huge thing. Cause all the district, like five different towns go to this dance. And I'm like, Oh, I can't wait. I get, I'm in line for the dance. I don't have my cane. Cause I hate being blind. I'm trying not to be blind. And all my friends go in and then I get pulled to the side in a classroom with a police officer and a teacher saying, your eyes are fucked up. What's wrong with you? What drugs are you on? Asking me all this shit. <laughs> and I was so scarred from that. I was like, I'm blind. And they were like, yeah, right. And like had to call my parents and confirm. No way. And then let me into the dance. And then the, for all through high school after that, even like seventh, eighth grade high school, I hated school dances. I was like terrified to go just because of that. And like yeah. fucking ruined it for you. It ruined it. But you also struggle like when you're born blind. I've I've related to like when you lose someone. You, have you ever lost someone? <laughs> yeah, that's why we got a show yeah. here, bro. Have yeah. I lost? Them? Yeah, His whole exactly. life has been lost. Exactly. Yeah. No, but um. So like you know that feeling though, where like you would have you ever driven yourself crazy about someone really close that all you want to do is bring them back? Yeah. And like it's, it you could sit there and that feeling alone could probably drive you insane if you let it like take over. Mm -hmm. it's, that yeah. is like the feeling of wanting to see perfectly like just one day like two minutes what does that look mm -hmm. like and it could drive you insane and it's like you just have to like live keep living let me ask you this this is a weird feeling do, first of all two questions i guess do you feel that there will be a technology before we're gone where you'll be able to see the way you know 2020 do you, is that in your world right now? Do you know of technology? Is there something coming? Is there anything that's beneficial? This, uh, and and also, what about VR? Have you guys dabbled in VR at all? Is there anything for the blind that you could see or anything like yeah, that? Or put like you that, into a reality cause, world? Because you would have to have something that would be linked directly. <clears throat> excuse me. It would have to be linked directly to your brain because your eyes aren't processing anything. Good point. You know. There's nothing, I mean, there's something called the Argus, I think it's like the Argus 2 chip now, mm -hmm. which is an implant, which does signal to the brain. And you can see things like uh, if you put like a strand of lights around a door frame or something like that, you could tell where that door frame is. I see. Um, but no pun I don't even I think mean, that I would, mean uh, that. I don't think that would work for me because I think you still need like your retina attached or something like that. Um and there's no so I don't like no I mean I think there is uh, listen, I in don't the know future. shit about shit but is there there's no cadaver surgery where yeah, they could can't uh, reattach that. your retinas or even no, put eyes the, into somebody is that possible If the nerve is no. dead it's over It's mm. over yeah like the retina is detached Yeah that retina is super like just we don't have the technology to know how but to connect that retina and right. that signal to the brain yeah. There's crazy breakthroughs now though with different like eye conditions gene that they're therapy. getting like gene therapy like injecting Need, like the needle in your eye and then you're able to mm -hmm. read a couple more lines on the chart but with that like even my eye condition alone it has like a thousand different types of genes mm -hmm. and each each lever's eye condition like my eye condition each one could be a different gene so you have to have that specific gene for that specific gene therapy so they need like thousands of cures All from right, one mm -hmm. eye condition I'm gonna ask you each the same question I'll go with you first Dan you get 24 hours of perfect sight what do you do with it? <sighs> Man, I go to the mountains. I love the mountains. Mountains with my son. It's Rockies or whatever, it doesn't matter. I miss that. That's like the one thing I, I loved seeing was like, yeah. yeah, snowy mountains. It's just like- And getting to see your son. Just that natural beauty of the earth, you know? Yeah. And being able to see my kid. I would like to see my kid old, you know, like 30, 40. Yeah. I'd like to see him growing up would be cool. That's great. But what yeah. about you, Anthony? Oh, man. I Like, first thing- 
go to the sun sunrise with my wife, and then I'd rent like a really fast car. <laughs> yeah, drive I'd cruise it. around like top speed at different places for a little. Go see like, you know, different landscapes and stuff. And then I told Dan this like even though like I never able to see perfect, I still had some site when I was younger where I could like get around in the day a little bit. And I never could see anything at night. Once the lights off, I don't, there's nothing at all. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to like run around the, the world at like nighttime, like see what it's like, like being able to see while the lights are kind of off, you yeah. know, like that feeling and just like it, it, a field of fireflies at night. Exactly. Shit. Like yeah. look, looking at the stars. Like, like a winter, and I was a winter thinking, night like, is the best. Putting a, uh, what is that called? A telescope like to mm -hmm. the, to the moon and shit <laughs> like that. Oh man. Like I look at the sky at night when there's a full moon and I could see a speck of light and I just like wonder what the fuck that looks like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, let me ask this question. I know it's going to sound stupid at first. I'll preface that. But what do you think, besides having vision, people with vision take most for granted when it comes to sight? Their sight. Does that does my question make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously the answer is just the ability to see, but. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the amount of independence I think that you have. Well, that's a good answer. To be able to like, we're always having to wait on somebody or something, even if it's Uber, right? Like, yes, I'm more independent with it, but I still have to wait for somebody. I still have to order that ride and I'm on somebody else's time. So to be on just your own time and, and grab your car keys and walk out the door and leave when you want to leave. Just say that would be the thing that I definitely took the most granted for okay. and missed the most is that independence. Yeah, I'd say freedom. Yeah. Like, And like, I know everyone has anxiety and stuff, but like, the the lack of anxiety that you'll have from being able to see if you were blind like the extra anxiety you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis just to get some things done mm -hmm. it's like because you'll have a task and you're like okay for me like i gotta get my guitar like pick my guitar up from the store or something it's like shit now i gotta figure out how i'm gonna get there how i'm gonna get back you know what's like how is this all gonna look and like figure where, everything where am out. i gonna get dropped off at yeah. where's Wait, the door gonna be at exactly how am i gonna find my ride and get back home man all that little shit man mm -hmm. Dude, and look at, all, looking at beautiful women too man <laughs> that'd be miss nice. that uh thank you both for coming on this has been an enlightening and uh really interesting and fun episode uh, Dan, I asked you the question when you were on here last time so anthony mm -hmm. i'm gonna ask you this time advice you'd give to your 16 year old self chill the fuck out yeah that's <laughs> i was like so also just being comfortable with myself like try and like dude don't worry about what everyone else thinks because everyone else is so concerned about themselves just the way you are like worrying about like fitting in and all that stuff it's like mm -hmm. just be more comfortable with who you are like be comfortable in your own skin because it's not like it's not going anywhere you know you're i remember a wise guy once told me he's like Dude, you're blind and the world's not waiting for you. So just figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you both. Will you please plug, promote uh, anything you'd like again? Yeah, four bad eyes across the board, <laughs> F-O-U-R. Um, and then Dan the Mancini's personal account. Yeah, uh, just ASF vision across the board. It's personal. Yeah. Four bad eyes, baby. Honey, do y'all? Thank you, Honey man. You got it, guys. Thank you so uh, much for having us. You got us. it, man. Thank you for being here. As always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to y'all next week. Mm -hmm.